Okay guys, I have never shared this, what I'm sharing right now. What I'm about to share is like, I have no one told this about, like, I have not talked about this in all these years of traveling and all my videos I've done here on YouTube, posts I shared on my Instagram, I have never shared about how I actually felt the first time I arrived in Kenya. And let me tell you, I was a low budget traveler, <laughs> a volunteer. I came here by myself all the way from Germany. Uh, I came through an organization who helped me to volunteer and who found me a host family. But the first day I arrived in Kenya, I was completely lost. Like, I don't even know where I should start telling you on what happened and what made me freak out. And I felt like crying. I actually did cry. And I asked myself, why the hell did I choose to come to Kenya? How could I be thinking as a student, as a female solo traveler, that I will be able to make it just on my own? surviving here without knowing anyone without having enough money in my savings account and just being here on my own traveling for half a year yeah <laughs> i was really brave that time <laughs> and maybe also naive i don't know but what shocked me most is my first day like i was arriving at jomo kenyatta at i mean the international airport here in Nairobi and I got picked up from the organization who hosted me and who helped me to stay and find a host family but the first night they took us like to a quarter where everyone was there like every volunteer who arrived like the last days the recent days got into a kind of big office like a big group where just like one sleeping room after the other sleeping room after the other sleeping room and um, they basically just picked me from the airport and dropped me there and just said, okay, that's it. Tomorrow we pick you and then you will get to your host family. And I was on my own, not even knowing, like, of course, I learned how to speak English in school, but English was never my favorite. Let's start there. Like, you can ask all my schoolmates, they will not even believe me that I'm actually shooting YouTube videos in English and not in German. <laughs> even still they're laughing about my pronunciation but I said I don't care like I was basically dropped in Kenya without understanding proper English so I basically so many asked me where do you have your Kenyan accent yes I, I learned it here of course I learned it in school um, but I never really got to talk and I never really understood like in all the listening comprehensions I failed in school so to that an extent that I decided in class 10 or 11, I decided, okay, I don't want to continue studying English anymore because it doesn't make sense for me. So I dropped out of English and I continue actually with French. So I was here by myself. I was the only German in that organization. I didn't understand anyone. Like I couldn't even express myself. I was just dropped there by myself. And then I'm like, okay, what's now? I didn't like the way the house looked like. It was like come down, there was just beds there. Then there was one cleaning or service lady. She made us dinner, or she gave us some food, which I didn't like at all, like even up to today. Okay, today it's getting better, but I could not align myself with Kenyan food. Like I was never a type who liked to eat rice and beans and meat and now Kenyan food is all that. And for me, it was just, horrible it started actually by getting out of the airport the guy dropped me like he picked me with his car and first of all driving here in Kenya is on the other side compared to Germany so you drive on the left side <laughs> and then we went in the car and we took a road which I did not know before like you can actually drive on that road I was like telling the driver um, are you sure that's the way and of course he does know I have no clue but I didn't believe that a car can manage to drive such a road. So that was number one, which I thought like, oh my goodness, we passed by like slum areas, or for me it looked like a slum area, probably it was not even a slum at all. And then he dropped me at the house, and then I was like, what do you mean? You, 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 you cannot just drop me, I don't have a phone, like I have a phone, but I don't have internet, like I need to communicate to my family, uh, I don't have 
any cash. Like I didn't withdraw any money at the airport. I was super afraid. I just went into uh, my airport transfer. So he said, okay, let me take you to the mall. And he charged me like $20 for five minutes taking me to the mall and back. But anyway, um, he took me to the mall and then he wanted to disappear again. I was like, no, 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 please stay with me, help me. I was so like desperate being on my own. I was so young and then being alone here and, and just feeling like I don't even know how to withdraw money. And then what happened, of course, because I was so scared and I don't know why, but this ATM, it was a MasterCard. And that's why I'm telling you guys, if you travel to Kenya, please do not bring MasterCard. Have a second one at least, come with Visa card. So this ATM, he took my card. So now I was in Kenya on my own without even having any cash. Oh, as you can see, it's still very emotional for me because I could not even, like nowadays, I would not do something like that again. I would plan it in a completely different way. But this was just me thinking, yeah, I can do this. I went to university. I can travel to Kenya, to Africa, just by myself, without knowing anyone, without anything, without being prepared. And actually that's the real thing, like when you travel to a new country, your expectation can be something completely different, which has nothing to do with the expectation you get when you come to this country. I mean, there were so many challenges I was facing, like so many. After the first night where I was just in my bed wishing I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sleep at all. And I was just wishing to take another plane going back to Germany. But then I thought like, I was fighting for this so long to come here, to travel for half a year and to fly all the way to Africa, be on my own and trying to be independent and a traveler. And then telling my mom and saying, um, I'm sorry, I don't like it. Like um, I got scared and let me come back home, please. So I'm like, no, this is not an option. Sinia, you do this, you can do this. Like I was just talking to myself. I, <laughs> I tried to convince myself so hard. And if you actually wonder how I managed to come all the way here by myself without, yeah, all this fear of not knowing what's going to happen, I shot a video about that, uh, which motivated me and which helped me to commit. And watch this video here so that you get an idea of my story and what I went through. Yes, but back to the challenges. So this wasn't it. Like this was the first day and it was the most horrible. I didn't eat at all. I cried, I was done like with the world. As I said, I wished someone would have just taken me back home to Germany. I could have continued with my comfortable life, but no, I was like, no, I want to travel. I can do that. I can manage all of this. And I'm like, okay, fine. You can do this. You can do this. Whew. So the following day, um, they took us or they took me in my host family, which was in Thika. Thika town, directly in Thika town. And that's where my heart began, like where my heart opened and when I fell in love with. But it wouldn't be that way. Like I would have not felt so home if I would have not had my host mom. Like she was really taking care of me. She was like making me feel home and welcome. She was there like, even though I couldn't really yet communicate properly with my broken English, but at least she helped me to feel loved and home and cared. And she also tried to cook food what I like, like some pasta. And I, I knew where the supermarket is. I could buy some Coke and cake and I just needed sugar. It was so super hot and I just needed to calm down. So after being the first day in my internship in a school, is when I, everything changed for me and I fell in love with Kenya. And apart from that, there are so, so, so many other challenges. Like even today, after more than seven, eight years of traveling in Kenya, there are still so many things like, which is for me a true culture shock, which I don't know, as a traveler, or I'm not a traveler anymore, I live here. You have to say, that's okay. And you have to accept it so that you can be happy. For example, time is a big issue for me. Up to today, some of them, not everyone, but in Kenya, time doesn't really exist the way it exists in Germany or in Europe. <laughs> so, yeah. So don't start planning your life around time. But also I learned or I was forced to learn like there are so much more beautiful and more important things in this world than time and being on time. Of course, you need to be productive and accurate and on time and delivering. But 
if you can schedule your, li your life and your day and you remove your time frame, you can live in the now and in the moment. And this really helped me to, to open up and to learn new skills or new sites, which I've never known before. Then another thing is, which actually got better, way better, even in whole Kenya, is the plastic and all the trash. Like, even before Kenya, I traveled to Ghana and then I thought like, oh my God, this smell and the trash everywhere, the plastic everywhere is on the ground and then they just burn it. I can't live with that. I, 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 I don't like it. It's, it's, it's so annoying, but it's a time where you get better with it. And also Kenya got better with this. Like there was something like where it was not allowed to use anymore this, the, the black plastic bags. So Kenya really got way cleaner than it used to be. But still, it is still an issue up to today. And then <laughs> another challenge, especially as a foreigner, as a white person, they call you here Muzungu. Um, there's a big problem with being overcharged and scammed. So I would say you grow up in such a country very easily, very fast. <laughs> you learn how to say no, you learn you have to ask to talk to locals and ask the real prices. But of course, also I did get scammed. Like when I was actually moving here to Roaka, where I'm now moving out of and I'm happy about it. I mean, nothing against Roaka, but <laughs> when I moved here first, I got scammed. I think 20K, which is like $200 because of an apartment, which I paid for and it didn't exist. I mean, of course you can say, man, how dumb are you? <laughs> and yes, true. Another thing is which goes on all over here, scams with m -Pesa or scams in safari and tourism. I mean, you guys know, I deal with safaris. I consult clients on traveling in Kenya. Um, there are just so many fake things there, which is for me like growing up in Germany, being like everything is properly made, everything is okay, everything goes to the rule and according to everything is like, has a straight line and it's correct. This is not the case here. <laughs> I mean, of course, there are also really good products and everything out here, but you might be surprised if you come with your European thinking of like everything is working, everything has to function in that way and your way is the right way. Like this is one thing of my biggest learning actually. When you travel, be open for new cultures, be open for everything what comes. Like you cannot expect to find the same lifestyle you live in Germany or wherever you come from to find here. And let me tell you something, another thing is yes, I came as a low budget traveler. And um, I came as a volunteer and I traveled low budget and I have seen poverty. I'm working in the slum and I travel all over. I work with villages. Um, you guys know me who follow me that I work with the women's only village in Humoja with some Maasai villages in Kajiado and um, an organization in the slum in Thika. But also Kenya has its luxury life and its beauty. And even here in Nairobi, you cannot imagine people are paying whatever, $4,000, $5,000 for their apartments or for their houses. And they're living a luxury lifestyle, which I did not even know from uh, my home in Germany. So do not think that Kenya is poor. Do not think that people here are living poor. And also do not think that everything here is cheap. That's not the case. So there is so many like expectations or misconceptions we carry before we come here, which might not be true at all. But for you to figure out what is your truth and what is important for you or like what you think is you have to come here first. And I'm also curious about everyone who is watching my channel or this video has followed me up to the end, up to here is like, what is your biggest culture shock and how did you make it to survive? <laughs> like, I mean, obviously I'm still here and I love Kenya so much. I have truly fallen in love with Kenya and traveling because it has such a beauty. The people are so friendly. It gives you so many opportunities. You have such a potential, like you can be the person you want to be. Like I can be and create the best version out of myself, which I was not able to do in Germany. And that's why I'm here. And that's what I love about Kenya. Yeah, so comment below what it is that shocked you most about traveling to Kenya or maybe another African country and how did you overcome it? And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and as always, I see you on my next video. <laughs>